Hi, I'm Jude from HeadFi.org. On this episode of HeadFi TV, we're going to talk about CanJam SoCal 2015, which is happening March 28th and 29th, 2015, at the West and South Coast Plaza Hotel in Costa Mesa, California. Go to CanJam.org to find out more information about CanJam SoCal and to find out how to be there, how to get there, because you want to be there. So far, this is shaping up to be literally the single biggest headphone audio event ever in North America, so you don't want to miss it. Now, in this episode of HeadFi TV, we're just going to give you a small sampling, just a taste of the acres of gear that are going to be at CanJam SoCal 2015. And that's really all we can give you is a small taste, because there are so many exhibitors coming in from all over the world, literally, that we couldn't possibly cover it all in an episode or even two episodes. So stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. Let's take a look at just a small sampling of gear that will be at CanJam SoCal 2015. I want to take a moment to thank the team that I've been working with. It's been such a privilege to work with these guys on CanJam SoCal. Um, it's going to be an amazing event, and it'll be thanks in large part to these guys. I'm talking about Ethan Apollyon, who goes by Third Eye on HeadFi, uh, Warren Chi, who goes by Warren P. Chi on HeadFi, and Joe Swick, who goes by Joe on HeadFi. So a lot of you guys on the forums probably know these guys already from the forums, but they've put in so many hours, so much time, so much effort to help make this CanJam SoCal event the best and biggest headphone audio event in North America ever. So thanks guys very much for all your help. Let's begin. Now of course, Odyssey will be at CanJam SoCal and you know they'll have their LCD line of headphones. The LCD2, the LCD3, the LCD-X and the LCD-XC are among the most popular headphones in the community at their prices and certainly very popular for exhibit use, whether they're company exhibits or private member tables. But at CES 2015, Odyssey announced a new model called the EL8. It comes in two versions, the EL8 Closeback and the EL8 Open. They're only $699 each and they're among the best values to my ears in headphones at that price. Remarkable values. Now if you heard them at CES 2015, those were prototypes. They are now in production version and both have improved substantially. The closed back especially. So if you heard the closed back at CES, it's a much improved version now and listen to it when you get a chance at CanJam SoCal. Again, both production versions are superb values at $699. Odyssey will also have their DAC amp combo. It's called the Deckard. I don't know the price, but we're going to show it to you on the screen right now. Um, the Deckard was something they also introduced at CES 2015. I didn't get a chance to really experience it and listen to it a lot there, so I'm really looking forward to trying the Odyssey Deckard at CanJam SoCal. Make sure you do the same. Sennheiser is going to be at CanJam SoCal, and they sent me a whole long list of products they're going to have there, and we're just going to go over a few examples of that long list here that we have on hand. So I've been really excited about what Sennheiser's been doing in wireless lately. I actually wrote this up uh, on HeadFi.org recently, and one of the products that they released recently that I just absolutely love is the Sennheiser Momentum Wireless. This is going to be at CanJam SoCal. It is a Bluetooth headphone. It comes in an around-the-ear version, which this one is, and an on-ear version that I haven't heard yet. But this has active noise canceling. Uh, it sounds really good in passive or active mode. Insanely long battery life. Good outgoing voice quality. Frankly, this is just a fantastic wireless headphone. It is my reference Bluetooth headphone right now. It's a bit expensive, though, at $500. I think it's worth it, um, and I use it constantly. Actually, right now, this is probably my most used headphone since I'm on the go a lot lately. Speaking of wireless, the RS-185, another new wireless model for home use, though, from Sennheiser. This is, in my opinion, the best sounding home wireless headphone currently made, period. I haven't heard them all, but I've heard a lot of them, and this is fantastic, the RS-185. As far as I'm concerned, in home wireless headphones, it's a competition between Sennheiser and Sennheiser. Um, but the RS-185 is maybe bettered by the old RS-220, uh, which is now discontinued, um, but it has much better resistance to dropouts, so if you've had any issues with the RS-220 and dropouts, this is said to improve on it. I have done direct comparisons between the two in terms of listening, and I think the RS-185 is really close. It's phenomenal. So listen to the RS-185. I'm pretty sure they're going to have it there. It's just an insanely good home wireless headphone that, in my opinion, sounds like a good wired headphone. Another wireless headphone that Sennheiser will have on hand is the Urbanite Wireless. I don't have that here, so I'm looking forward to hearing that for the first time with you at CanJam SoCal. They will also have the wired Urbanites, which we do have. This is the XL. This is the on-ear. So if you wanted to hear the Urbanite line, 
um, check out the Urbanites at CanJam SoCal at Sennheiser's exhibit. As far as in-ears go, look for the momentum in-ear. I have to imagine they're going to have that there. This is a value-priced in-ear. It is exceptionally good for the price. This is the momentum. It looks really, really nice. Uh, it has the momentum aesthetic, but in an in-ear. So listen and check out the momentum in-ear at Sennheiser's exhibit. Of course, the flagship, IE800, $1,000 flagship, dynamic in-ear from Sennheiser, one of my favorite Universal Fit in-ears. It's been around a long time, so you might have already heard it, but if you haven't and they have it there, give it a listen. Then, of course, the venerable HD800. Probably, well, no, I'll say it. In my opinion, the single best moving coil dynamic headphone ever made. It's been around since 2009. If you've been to a HeadFi meet, you've probably heard it because it makes its showing at HeadFi meets like crazy. They'll have that there with the HDVD800 or the HDVA600 Sennheiser amp or amp DAC. So look for the venerable Sennheiser HD800 there and probably at a ton of other exhibits because it's used a lot, the HD800 is. So Sennheiser coming with a lot of stuff, CanJam SoCal 2015. I'm thrilled to report that Philips will be joining us at CanJam. SoCal is an exhibitor. Their Fidelio line of headphones, these three are Fidelios, are among the most consistently good headphones. Philips has come such a long way in the last few years. I've been to uh, their audio research and development facility in Leuven, Belgium. They, I'm not sure. They might have moved that now to, to Hong Kong. But, but I went to go see their R&D facilities, and it was just insanely impressive. These guys are doing really cool things with their headphones in the Fidelio line, the best among them. Now, the Fidelio X2, I believe, would be then the flagship, an amazing value headphone. I will say it, this is a candidate for my favorite new product of 2014. So this took over for the previous version, which was the Fidelio X1. The Fidelio X1 was a really good headphone, but it didn't fit my head. I had to bend the headband to make it fit. Um, there were other quirky things about it, a weird little cable thing that jutted out of the earpiece, but they fixed everything with the Fidelio X2. Um, the cable is now detachable where it should be, which is at the beginning of the cable, and it fits my head with room to spare. And I have a pretty big head, but it fits my head with room to spare, and the sound signature has been improved. So if you haven't heard the smooth sounding Fidelio X2, the flagship Fidelio, make sure to listen to it at CanJam SoCal. This is a new model I just got. This is the M2L, the Fidelio M2L. This is a lightning only cable. So if you're an iPhone user, it comes terminated in lightning and then it has a DAC inside. I think it goes then 2448 would be the maximum spec out of the lightning uh, uh, port of my iPhone. So you plug it in and it, no batteries or anything like that. It's powered by lightning and there's a DAC inside of here. So you're essentially doing the DAC work uh, that's digital analog conversion inside the headphone. It's direct connection to your iPhone. It's really cool and this, this headphone sounds fantastic. I do wish that you could plug it into an analog source, but I've been having fun with it even though it's lightning only. Very, very cool. The Fidelio L2, uh, this is uh, takes over for the Fidelio L1. This has been out for a while, so maybe you guys have seen it already. I don't know that a lot of you have heard it because I haven't really seen the L2 a lot in the US, um, so you'll have a chance hopefully to hear the Fidelio L2 at CanJam SoCal, make sure to stop by. Now one of the things that uh, when I went to Leuven, Belgium to visit Philips that they were doing was developing this headphone. This is the Philips A5 Pro. They were developing this in conjunction, it's a DJ headphone, they were developing it in conjunction with Armin Van Buren. And they were putting like a tremendous amount of R&D effort into this headphone. Now at the time it wasn't ready to listen to, we were just kind of looking at renderings and then we could see them on Armin from afar, but we didn't get a chance to really play with the A5 Pro. Well, it came out and I was very surprised. I wasn't sure what to expect. It's, a, there's, it's certainly bass emphasis with this headphone, but it is very good for a DJ headphone, better than I expected. It also folds really compact, which is really neat. Check this out. So for such a big headphone, it folds up very compactly and its case is very compact. And it also has this cool like bayonet system for the pads. They come off just like lenses on a camera and they screw on and off just that easily and have a nice detent feels good. But check out the A5 Pro. Again, I don't see these a lot. They're not discussed a ton on HeadFi, but if you like some bass emphasis and you kind of like the DJ headphone vibe, uh, check out the Philips A5 Pro, another very cool headphone. Philips will probably have some other stuff that I don't have here. They have a new noise canceler that I don't have yet, and I'm hoping to get that soon. But make sure to check out Philips Exhibit, check out the Fidelios, check out the A5 Pro, and whatever else they're showing. I'm so thrilled they'll be there. Jerry Harvey Audio and Astell and Kern will both be exhibiting at CanJam SoCal and both will be exhibiting separately, so you might wonder why I'm mentioning them together. And that's because together they released 
Jerry Harvey Audio's flagship piece is in universal fit form. So JH Audio is known mostly for their custom in-ear monitors, of course, um, but their three flagship models, the Roxanne, the new Layla, and the new Angie, are now being offered in universal fit form in the partnership with Astell and Curran. Now, very few people have so far, up till now, been able to hear the Layla or the Angie. And I'll say this, you better hear them. So both are the first multi-driver headphones ever to the best of my knowledge, to use fourth order crossovers. Now we did an episode specifically about them, so I'm not gonna go into detail about it. But the Layla is simply the best sounding in-ear monitor I have ever heard. And I've only heard the custom, I mean, I'm sorry, the universal fit version. And I never thought I'd ever say that about a universal fit earphone, that it's better than even any custom I've so far heard. I can't wait to hear a custom Layla. But anyways, when you get a chance, you have to listen at CanJam SoCal to the Layla. It's spectacular. It's really, it's quite large, but it just sounds fantastic, and I don't care how big it is, I use it a lot because it sounds unreal. Um, now, I imagine they're going to be available to listen to at both the JH Audio exhibit and the Astell and Kern exhibit. Anyways, look around, you'll find them, give them a listen. Now, JH Audio also recently announced that they have custom fit versions of the Layla and the Angie available now. And um, I think they're kind of gearing those more right now toward the pro market, but maybe if you ask nicely and you're not a musician, not a mixing engineer or whatever, maybe you can still get your hands and your ears on a custom Layla or Angie. So make sure to check out uh, those exhibits for those. Now another cool headphone that Astell and Kern did in partnership with someone is this. This is the AKT5P. It was released in conjunction and designed and custom voiced in conjunction with Biodynamic. So you might be familiar with the Biodynamic Tesla T5P. This is the AKT5P. I have a T5P and now I have here an AKT5P and it does indeed sound different. Um, and I really prefer the AKT5P. What's really cool is you, it comes terminated in the two and a half millimeter uh, balanced plug, um, and it comes with this adapter so you can use it with normal devices, not just a balanced two and a half millimeter plug, so you can adapt it for single-ended use. But you plug it into this, and there is an EQ setting in the most recent firmware update of the AK240, and I believe also the AK100 II and the 122. It's an AKT5P EQ setting. And it sounds really good with the AKT5P. Go to their exhibit and play with that. It's really fun. So plug in the AKT5P and try the AKT5P EQ setting. You don't need to use the AKT5P EQ setting, but it sounds good with it. So you can still use this and sound fantastic with other devices with this adapter. So check out the AKT5P from both Biodynamic and Astell and Kern at the Astell and Kern exhibit. And again, don't forget to go into the EQ of the device and check out the AKT5P EQ setting. Very cool. Mastrop's going to be at CanJam SoCal, and they're going to be bringing, among other things, a lot of AKG love. So one of the coolest drops that Mastrop did last year, maybe it was the coolest, was the K7XX. It was a headphone they did in conjunction with AKG that was essentially a reissued K702 65th Anniversary Edition, but in all black and at a reduced price. And at the reduced price and the performance of it, I think it was one of the better headphone values to come out last year. I know it's not new per se, um, but as far as I'm concerned with the new color and the reduced price, it's new. And if you've listened to a K701 or a K702 and you found them leanish or bright, this is in every way to my ears an improvement. It's more robust on the low end and the top is smoother. It's still a detailed headphone, a wonderful value. Um, look for the K7XX at the Mastrop exhibit. Another cool AKG headphone Master Op will have will be the K553 Pro. This is a brand spanking new model. I think this might be the only K553 in the country right now. I'm borrowing it from Master Op, and so far I'm really enjoying it. So you might be familiar with the K550. I have it. This is mine, and I like this headphone. It's a bit bright sometimes. It can be a bit leanish. And so far, in just early comparisons, the 553 is an improvement. Certainly in the treble, it's smoother and I'm enjoying it. Again, very brief listen so far, but I'm really looking forward this weekend to spending more time comparing these. But the K553 Pro is something Mastrop will have there. I don't know that anybody else is going to have it. So check it out at CanJam SoCal. AKG is not the only thing Mastrop's bringing to CanJam SoCal. They're also going to have a couple of cool digital audio players. One is the Luxury and Precision LP5 Gold. It's a 32192 digital audio player. It uses the AK4414 DAC chip. Um, I'm not going to go into too much detail about it, but it looks like a pretty cool player. And I think it's made by the people who made the Colorfly C4. They're going to also have the KNN6, another cool digital audio player based on the PCM1792 DACs inside. Um, again, not too much detail, but the design of it looks really, really cool. Make sure to stop by Mastrop's exhibit to listen into the KNN6. They're also going to have a couple of in-ears, the Custom Art Harmony 8 Pro Universal. It's a 3D printed acrylic shell. 
Um, eight drivers per side, I believe, three-way design. Look for that. They're going to have the Custom Art Music One Universal. That is a full silicone universal with single balanced armature, of course. That would make it a one-way configuration. And also, as far as other headphones go, they're going to have the Audio-Technica ATH MSR7, I'm told. So I haven't heard that model yet. Can't wait to hear it. So check out Mastrop's exhibit for all of this stuff at CanJam SoCal 2015. At audio shows, there are usually a few products that could be called the most anticipated products of the show, the products that some people actually come to the show specifically to hear. This year, there's no doubt that one of those products is Shit Audio's new flagship Yggdrasil DAC or digital analog converter. We're talking about this big beast right here. Now, Shit Audio was founded by two seasoned audio industry figures, Jason Stoddard, formerly of Sumo, and Mike Moffat, formerly of Theta. Many of you know Jason Stoddard because he's very active at HeadFi, and he published his book, titled Shit Happened, chapter by chapter in his blog area at headfi.org. It's a must-read book, so make sure you go to his blog area and read it, and he's still posting bonus chapters for us now, which is awesome. Now, Mike Moffat doesn't post nearly as much on the forums where he goes by Balder, so you may not know him quite as much yet. Now, Jason Stoddard does more of the work on the analog side of shit. Mike Moffat does more of the work on the digital side of shit. So the Yggdrasil is definitely Mike's baby. Now, when I asked if Mike would call the Yggdrasil the best DAC he's yet designed, the answer was yes. And that would include being better than all the Theta DACs he's designed up to the Theta Generation 5, and that is saying something. In addition to using a multi-bit ladder architecture, whereas almost every DAC today is of the Delta Sigma type, the Yggdrasil makes use of extensive DSP or digital signal processing to implement the digital filter and the formatting needed to interface with the DACs. Now, speaking of the DACs, the multi-bit DAC chip selected for use in the Yggdrasil is the analog device's AD5791BRUZ, which admittedly I wasn't familiar with until the Yggdrasil. Now, I am certainly not one to make any assumptions based on a piece of gear's bill of materials. That said, there was one glaring thing about the AD5791BRUZ in this regard that I simply have to mention. I priced out that chip at DigiKey, and that chip is priced at $104 each. In quantities of 1000 the price is $82 each. In the Yggdrasil, there are four of these. Now anyway, I won't go into any more detail than that about the Yggdrasil, but I will say this. The Shit Yggdrasil is easily one of the best source components I have ever heard, and I've now ordered two. Now, we'll get into more detailed discussion about the Yggdrasil down the road because it certainly merits a more thorough discussion beyond this preview video. Moving over to the analog side and Shit's flagship there, we have this, the Shit Audio Ragnarok. This one's mine, and it's a monster. It's as crazy as the Yggdrasil, only it's a headphone amp. Shit calls it a universal amplifier, and I can certainly understand why, because it not only powers all of my headphones, including the difficult Hi-Fi Man HE6, which it handles with ease, by the way, it also drives my Kef LS50 loudspeakers with its maximum output of 100 watts per channel into 4 ohms. Like I said, it's a monster. There are a lot of other neat features in the Ragnarok that I don't have the time to go over, but here's one of my favorites. The Ragnarok uses a relay switch stepped attenuator, the likes of which I'd never used previously. It's a 64 step attenuator setup, and the sounds those relays make to give me those 64 steps is the stuff of audio geek fantasy. Listen to the relays as I adjust the volume on the Ragnarok. Let me get my microphone here. Check this out. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? That's the sound the relays are making to give me the 64 steps as I change the volume control, adjust the volume. That's so cool. Anyway, the Ragnarok and the Yggdrasil represent Shit's no holds barred flagship pieces. Now, Shit Audio will, of course, also have their super affordable high value DAX amps and accessories at CanJam SoCal, so make sure to stop by their exhibit and listen to it all. And to do this. <laughs> Moon Audio is going to be at CanJam SoCal, and you can bet they're going to have a huge exhibit, as always, with tons of gear from different manufacturers. Now, I'm not going to venture to guess at everything they'll be bringing, but I know of a few things that they'll certainly have, cables certainly among them. Moon Audio is known, most of all, for their custom cabling, and I can't think of a company in the world that sells more custom headphone cabling than Moon Audio. Here are a couple of examples. That's my Sennheiser HD800 uh, with a Black Dragon cable from Moon Audio terminated with an adapter end. Uh, this is the Hi-Fi Man HE560 also terminated in adapter end with a Black Dragon cable. Now the adapter end allows you to choose any plug you want, whether it's a 2.5 millimeter Astel and Kern balanced plug all the way up to a full-size dual 3-pin XLR and anything in between. 
You, it, it allows you to save money if you have a lot of different amps, portable and desktop amps, which I do, or if you have a lot of headphones, which I do. It allows you to change the plugs without having to change the entire cable, which is very cool. So make sure to check out um, the headphone cables from Moon Audio. Oh, actually, they also make in-ear monitor cables. These are my uh, Shure SE846s terminated with um, a, just a standard mini end and a Silver Dragon cable. So even in-ear monitors can be custom cabled by Moon Audio. Drew Baird from Moon Audio is very good friends with Dennis Had, and if the name Dennis Had sounds familiar to you, it's because he's the founder of Carry Audio. Now, together they developed a headphone amp called the Inspire Dragon, and Dennis designed the Inspire Dragon to be a purist tube headphone amp. So here's what I'm talking about. Of course, you've got to plug your source component into this headphone amp, but from the RCA jacks, here's how the signal travels. RCA jacks to the stepped attenuator to the tubes to the output transformer, and then to the output to your headphones. Again, a very purist approach to a tube headphone amp. Make sure you give a listen to the Inspire Dragon at the Moon Audio exhibit. Moon Audio won't only have desktop gear, they're gonna have a pretty serious collection of portable gear at CanJam SoCal as well. This is the iQ V5. It is one of my favorite new portable DAC amp combos. It sounds good, but it also goes forever, and I travel a lot. The battery just seems to last forever. It's like voodoo. So as it turns out, what it is, it has a high-res DAC inside, but it has a Class D amp. And I think Cables, the maker of the iCube, um, they say it's about 90 to 95% efficient or something like that, the amp section, the Class D amp section. What that means is it pretty much sips power but gives a lot of big sound. And so it goes, I think, for, they say it goes for up to 70 hours if you use the uh, analog input and up to 30 hours if you use the digital input. I don't know how accurate exactly those numbers are, but it seems to go forever. I've never run it down completely. I use it, I charge it after a trip, and I can use it again for seemingly forever. So again, don't know how accurate those numbers are, but I can say it goes a really long time and it'll drive just about anything I'd wanna drive portably. So from over ears, I wouldn't drive an HE6 with it or try, um, but it'll drive most of the headphones I'd use portably. I've been using it with the Oppo PM3. Um, I've used it with the Odyssey EL8, the new EL8. I've actually used it with the HE560 and it'll drive them. It'll also drive an 800. It wouldn't be my first choice for that. Um, but it's also quiet enough to use with my efficient in-ears. So anyways, check out the iQ V5 at Moon Audio's exhibit. It's one of my favorite new portable DAC amp combos because I travel a lot. AudioQuest is going to be at CanJam SoCal, and they're going to be showing their new AudioQuest Nighthawk headphone. This is an early prototype of it. The production version that you'll see at CanJam will look quite a bit nicer. Um, but it'll look a lot like this, but with a better finish. Now, this headphone uses some pretty cool, innovative features and materials. It's made to be sustainable, for example. The cup is made out of liquid wood, which is a material that's based on wood, but processed in a way that you can mold it like plastic, but it has benefits of wood. It's a really neat material I don't think any headphone company is using right now. Um, there's a lot of attention to detail in the design. If you look at the driver unit, which I think I'm allowed to show, this is a um, driver unit from a prototype, and the venting is perfectly symmetrical. Uh, they use damping in the front. It uses a 50 millimeter uh, biocellulose driver, and speaking of damping, inside there's extensive use of damping materials. Uh, there's an acoustic wool inside, uh, quite a bit of it. Uh, this again is a prototype, so it may have changed a bit in the production form. And there's also an anti-resonant coating on the inside of the liquid wood cup which is really neat. You can't see it from there, but uh, I can see it from here. So it's pretty cool. Um, again, a lot of attention to detail. The shock mount type mount of the ear cup so that it can articulate nice is really cool. It's like a microphone shock mount, and it's mounted the ear cup to the yoke using these high-grade silicone bands, and then it uses this comfort strap headband. It's gonna sell for $599. I haven't heard the production version yet, so I'm gonna be hearing it for the first time, just like you at CanJam SoCal, so make sure to stop by the AudioQuest exhibit at CanJam SoCal. Oppo is gonna be exhibiting at CanJam SoCal, and I think by now most of you are familiar with Oppo. They entered the HeadFi market last year with a big bang with the Oppo PM1 and PM2, semi-open or semi-closed, depending on how you wanna look at it, uh, planar magnetic headphones, and also this big beast of a desktop DAC amp combo, the Oppo HA1. Now, late last year at CanJam at Rocky Mountain Audio Fest, Oppo gave a sneak preview of this. This is the Oppo PM3, a portable headphone, and this year you'll be able to listen to the production version of it because it has been officially released. Finally, a lot of people have been waiting for it, and I think a lot of people are going to be thrilled when they hear it. So it sounds like it came from the family of the Oppo PM1, PM2, because it did. I think it has a slightly smaller driver. It's still planar magnetic, but 
Oppo has added a dash of excitement to the sound signature with this relative to its siblings. A little more treble energy and a little bit more thump down low, but still very controlled. So it's a really fantastic sounding portable headphone. It's also closed, whereas the siblings are semi-open or semi-closed. This is a fully closed design. Uh, which you generally want for a portable headphone, and it is a little smaller than its siblings. Um, it also comes in this wonderful carrying case um, that's, uh, I think it's a selvedge denim like its siblings uh, case, but it's a little smaller. So again, it's more compact. So look for the Oppo PM3 at CanJam SoCal 2015. It's an awesome portable closed headphone. Also make sure to listen to the Oppo HA2 DAC amp combo now in its production form. This is a beautiful little DAC amp combo. Um, like everything else Oppo builds, the fit and finish, the build quality is insane. I love this leather or leatherette. I don't know if that's real leather cover, but it feels wonderful uh, in your hand uh, to hold versus most other portable amps. It is a very clever little DAC amp combo. First of all, from the sound standpoint, uh, the DAC in it is based on the ESS 9018 K2M. It'll support up to 32384 PCM or up to DSD, I think it's DSD, let me see. Yeah, DSD 256. Uh, so it is a very capable little DAC amp combo when it comes to supporting formats. Uh, the amp will drive up to 3,000 milliwatts in a 16 ohm, so it can drive pretty much anything you'd want to drive portably, including of course the PM3 by Oppo, which I'm sure they had in mind and are hoping that you buy in addition. Uh, it does actually make for a really nice system. Um, now it is also MFI certified, which means you can plug your iDevice, your iPad, iPod, iPhone directly into uh, the HA2 and it will serve as a DAC for those devices. Of course it's also a USB DAC. Now another cool feature uh, of the HA2 is the fact that it will charge. I think they call it like charge bank or something like that. Uh, yeah, mobile power bank is what they call it. And it will charge your phone in a pinch if you need to charge your phone, you can access its 300 milliamp hour battery to do that. Here's another cool feature when it comes to charging. It comes with this. It's called a VOOC charger, V-O-O-C. I actually don't know what it stands for. I didn't look that up. But this is the VOOC cable. If you use the VOOC cable and the VOOC charger, it will pump like five amps of charge power, if I'm, if, I'm, if I'm not mistaken. I think it's like five amps of charge power into the HA2, which will charge it in like 30 minutes. That is very cool. Now, of course, in order to, to have that happen, you've got to carry this specialized charger and cable. But you know what? I'm willing to do that when I'm carrying the HA2 because a 30-minute charge time is ridiculously short. So that's a very cool feature. So anyways, oh, by the way, and it sounds really good. Of course, that's the most important part. But make sure to stop by Oppo's exhibit. So you can listen to the PM3, oops, the PM3 and uh, the HA2 uh, portable DAC amp. Orender is going to be exhibiting at CanJam SoCal 2015. I'm so thrilled they're going to be there. Um, they make uh, what is one of my favorite portable DAC amps. It's called the Orender Flow, and you'll be able to experience that at CanJam SoCal. So the Orender Flow, I'm sure some of you are probably familiar with it, is actually quite unique. In addition to being a DAC amp, and by the way, the DAC chip in it is the ESS 9018K2M, but in addition to being a really nice DAC amp, it also has space for an SSD inside. So in this, I have a one terabyte SSD. So you say, why would you want that? The reason I would want that is because my main on-the-go computer is a MacBook Air, and that only has two USB ports. So I can have my media drive, again, a one terabyte SSD in the Orender Flow, and the DAC, the USB DAC, take up only one USB port on my MacBook Air, leaving the other port free for other things like uh, card readers, photo card readers, and things like that. So it's very cool to have that. It's also dead quiet. Uh, I use it with my most sensitive in-ear monitors, but yet it has enough power to drive any headphone that I would want to use portably. No, it won't drive an HE6. Actually, I've driven an HE6 with it, but it's not ideal with a Hi-Fi Man HE6. But any headphone that I'd want to use portably, I've been able to drive with the Orender Flow. It's absolutely fantastic. That's a cool display. It's not on right now um, because you kind of have to plug it into USB to, to, to turn it on and activate that. But it has this cool, very nice feeling uh, control knob and volume knob. So that's the Orender Flow. Make sure to stop by their exhibit and listen to that. Now they'll also have the Orender Cast 5 7. My wife and son are probably freaking out right now because their kitchen TV is right here. I had to take it so I could show it to you. Uh, this is a very cool device. It has in this slot right here a place for an HDMI stick like a Roku stick. And so I can watch Netflix, HBO Go, and anything else that you can watch on Roku right here. Uh, on the Cast 5 7. It's a 7 inch high def screen and then it has this really cool speaker right here uh, that pumps out a lot of sound, like more sound than you'd expect 
uh, from this little device. It's actually pretty sturdy though. It's like an all metal chassis and so it's quite heavy, but we actually use this in the kitchen at my house. This is the Orender Cast 57. You really need to check it out. The screen is small, but it's big enough to watch while you're doing stuff in the kitchen. I also sometimes move it because it's actually quite portable even though it's heavy. And I'll actually place this on some of my desks sometimes if I just want to have a little screen running documentaries or something in the background or a rock documentary. I love watching rock documentaries. So the Cast 57 is something you need to check out. I think a lot of head fires would dig it. It's a little off the beaten path. Uh, based on what we usually talk about a head fi, but it sounds really good for what it is. So check out the Cast Fi 7 and the Orender Flow at the Orender exhibit at CanJam SoCal 2015. So that was just a sneak preview of some things that you can hear and see at CanJam SoCal 2015, and that's coming right up March 28th and 29th at the West and South Coast Plaza in Costa Mesa, California. So make sure to join us. But we're actually not done here yet. We're going to show you still a few more things that you can see in here at CanJam SoCal 2015 in another episode of HeadFi TV. So make sure to pay attention to the channel and to HeadFi.org. Look for that episode coming really soon.